Good evening and uh, welcome along to AFTV News Daily. Hope you have been having a great day. We've got a very special guest with us tonight. Welcome along to the show, ex-Arsenal player, Justin Hoyt. How are you doing, Justin? Hi, uh, good, thanks. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. Where are you, first of all? I'm in Miami at the moment um, uh, with a club, Miami Club of Football. Um, you know, during this lockdown thing, we played one game and then our season got kind of cancelled and stopped. So um, I've been out here since just helping the team um, restructure for, for when we start back. So, yeah, I'm in Miami at the moment. So Miami, what, what have you not been able to get back to the UK then? Are you, you've been stuck no, there? Or? Get back just yet. Um, so I think when the, the borders open, I can travel back. I'll fly back and then uh, for maybe two weeks during that quarantine thing and then, and then fly back out uh, ready for the season starting. So, so your season just started and then that was it? Yeah, we played like one game and I think we won our first game and there was a great buzz around the team and everything. And then um, we was meant to play like a derby game the, the weekend after and then it got cancelled. So, um, and then we was all on lockdown, shutdown, curfews and everything. So mm. uh, in that sense, we had a momentum going, but um, disappointing that we had to stop for, for the next derby game. Miami can't be the nicest place to be in a lockdown because there's so many... Every time I've been to Miami, there's so much to do there. There's the beautiful beaches. It's got a great nightlife. Not that you should be doing that because you're you're still playing football. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah no, it's, it's a bad place, you know. Um, it was funny because the Sunday I was on the beach walking um, and having a meal with my friend. And then the next thing, we was in lockdown and it was like, you couldn't go to the beach, you couldn't go anywhere. Um, so, no, it was kind of tough in that sense. And... Um, you know, you just sat outside wishing you can go to them places. Um, but, you know, I've been keeping fit and running and walking, which is um, kind of nice in, in the heat and the, and the sunshine of Miami. Mm, I mean, I was, that's the question I was going to ask you. I mean, we've seen it with players over here. It's a very frustrating period for them because you can't, you're all right, you can run, but you can't train properly with a ball at your feet, can you? No, you can't train properly. I mean, um, even the parks here were closed. Um, so it was like there was no grass available to, to just kind of train, you know. Um, so literally you're just working on fitness and, you know, that gets kind of boring, but um, it has to be done. And, yeah, you, all you want to do is, is kick a ball around and sometimes that's not possible. So um, it does get frustrating for sure. Well, let, let's spin it right back, of course. And I say spin it right back. You <laughs> yeah, yeah, way right. back. <laughs> hey, yeah, I dropped that beautifully. You was a right back yeah. at Arsenal. I remember um, seeing you play. Um, on many occasions, um, what was it like? What was it like being playing for Arsenal? Because you, I mean, when you was coming through mm -hmm. into the Arsenal team, that was the era of the Invincibles Arsenal. Yeah. And you were breaking through into that team mm -hmm. as just a, a kid, weren't you? Yeah, as a kid, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, for me being first, it was be me being an Arsenal supporter and um, a boyhood fan um, was a dream come true to even get in the first team and uh, just to be part of the locker room and, and be part of the squad. So um, for me, that was a fantastic honour and, and great that um, I was able to make a dream come true. Um, but I was kind of tough, you know, breaking into to that team with, you know, world-class players um, all around you. Um, and me as a young player trying to get into that was, was really, really tough. Um, so I'm kind of happy that I got the games that I did. Um, could I have made more of my chance? Yes, maybe. But... Um, at the same time, it was. Oh, sorry, we lost him. Oh, we lost him slightly there. Oh, we've lost your volume. To, oh, we've got you sorry, we lost yeah, you. So it was a tough time. To... Hello? Yeah, I've got you now. Yeah, so it was a tough time to break into to the first team. So um, it was tough, um, but it was a, it was a great, great time, great um, experience to be part of the first team. And I was glad that. Um, to be part of the Invincibles, really, only, you know, playing one game, but trading every day and, and playing with the players was was unbelievable. What was it like? You know, we, we were discussing this the other day because we were all watching over here. I don't know if you've seen it, but the Michael Jordan um, documentary that's been on the last um, dance. And we were yeah. talking, since that's been on, there's been a lot of talk about winning mentality. Yeah. What yeah. was it like in that, dressing room at the time with all those winners with you know you've got Thierry Henry there you've got Dennis Bergkamp Vieira mm -hmm. Perez all these sort of guys what you know Lauren 
What was it like being in that dressing room? It was a great. You could tell the, 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 the winning mentality um, as you walk in the locker room. Uh, it was a very bubbly, lively um, locker room. Everyone got on with each other. Um, and I could feel you sense that every stadium, I say this, every stadium we went to, um, we had that winning feeling. And we knew that even if we went a goal behind or um, a goal ahead, that we was going to win the game. Um, and a lot of teams, uh, when they come to Highbury or the Emirates, I say, was defeated already. Um, mm. So in that sense, it was already weird already had one up on, on the teams we were playing against. Um, and even in training, the mentality was nothing but a winning mentality. And I think mm. that kind of showed on the field. But, um, you know, players that have won stuff uh, and, and performed well for Arsenal um, kind of, you know, fed that down to, to players coming into the into the team. But it was a great locker room and a great atmosphere to, to be a part of. Mm. People talk about that a lot. When you talk to footballers, they always talk about the importance of training, being intense. Mm -hmm. you know how important is that i think it's very important because um you know if you don't train um sometimes how you want to perform um uh, how you're going to play on match days then i feel it kind of bleeds on on what you do in in the game um and that sense of how what we've done on training you could see how um the impact we made um as a team against team um you know arsene finger had a strict um, regime strict routine um and that kind of fed the way we played um, mm. And that was the day in training, um, and everyone wanted to win. Um, there were some times where we played small sided games, and you know, team uh, your team lost, and everyone was frustrated and angry that you lost. Um, and then the other team was celebrating with joy. But I think that kind of showed on the field that when we won games, you know, it was happy, and no one wanted that losing feeling in match day. So um, mm. I think the training environment kind of helped um, the way we performed on the field. Was it intimidating? I mean, you're a think, young player. As I said, you're a young player, right? Even you go out onto that training ground. What, how old would you have been there? You, you must have been about like 18, 19, right? I was like 18, 19, yeah. I think when I first started training with the first team, I was like 17, 18. And I think it was, firstly, it was intimidating for me, for sure. Um, you know, looking at these world-class players. And I'm, for me, it's like they're my boyhood heroes, you know? And I'm looking mm. at them and I'm like, wow, I'm part of this group, you know? Um, so at first it was kind of daunting um, for me, I, and I, was, I admit I was a bit shy at first. Um, and it took me a little while to, to develop my own personality around them kind of players. Um, because at first I wasn't sure what to say to them, you know, how to approach them and, and just different stuff like that, really. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was very daunting. But, um, you know, I learned a lot from them um, and I learned a lot about myself and mm. how to certain players and older players and, and speak to them just about their career and how they prepare for games. So I learned a lot in that sense. Now, you're, you're, you're from a really sporting family, isn't it? Because your brother yeah. was also at Arsenal. Yeah. We, we, your, mom and dad, your mom and dad as well, isn't it? Uh, like, sporty people. Yeah, yeah. My mom and dad, yeah. So my dad was a sprinter, uh, competed for Great Britain, and my mum was an Olympic athlete for Great Britain also, and competed in two Olympics in the 100 metres, so, and the relay. Um, so, yeah, we come from a very sporting background. Um, and my brother was um, an Arsenal player, also made, um, mm. I think, a few games um, in the League Cup and then for uh, in the Premier League. So that's good also that we come from a sporting background that kind of helped um, our development and, our, um, you know, rise mm. to success. And, and could you remember when you first sort of signed for Arsenal? I mean, as a kid, do you remember it? Yeah, I remember it, yeah. I remember it, yeah. I remember it very, very clearly, yeah. And I, I was actually going to be kept on the first time. Um, I think it was under 15s or 16s, just before you went to like YTS back then. Um, I wasn't going to be kept on, but um, Paul Davis kept faith in me and, and told uh, Liam Brady at the time that they should keep me on and sign me um, and play me at right back. Um, and I'm grateful for that because if it wasn't for Paul Davis, I wouldn't have been at, at Arsenal or I would have been somewhere else or my path would have been completely different. So, um, But in that sense, I remember it because I remember then after that, I trained with the first team. I went on in national duty, come back, and then I think it was the next day uh, they told me I'm moving up to the first team dressing room, um, and that was just that was a, that was great. That was a great moment uh, moving up to the first team. Hmm. And of course, Arsene Wenger, you was you was under them. What was he like? Uh, it was great. It was great with me. It was great. Um, I mean, he was a kind of manager that was more relaxed and just overlooked everything. But um, for me personally, it was fantastic, and his attention to detail in training and 
and how you prepare players for games and just the way he helped every individual was 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 great and i take a lot of um, what he said um you know in in uh in my career now so um and a lot of his coaching techniques i use now um helping younger players that, that i help now so yeah, i think mm. that's great learning uh, yeah. person to learn I saw um something. I, I I you know I didn't even realize this right, but I was um I saw this today that you're the first Englishman. <laughs> you know I'm gonna say yeah, yeah. you're the yeah, first yeah, yeah. Englishman to score at the Emirates. Yeah, yeah. That's that's uh, for me. That's a great bit of history, you know. Um, be an Arsenal supporter first. You want to be um you know part of the club and to have that kind of history um behind you and in the record books and just in life i think that's that's amazing you know and no one can take that away from you um and no one can take that away from me so um no matter what anyone said about my career good or bad i've still got that uh, memory that will always live uh, at the emirates that's a wicked memory man that's your grandkids and everyone you know you sit you there yo you know he's the first man to score at the emirates <laughs> me <laughs> I'm to now, you know, when I'm celebrating with Thierry. So yeah, that's that's. I think for me, that's a great photo also to to have yeah. in the brain, you know. So um, it was a, it was a great day, and it was it was funny because in the locker room before, um, you know, Thierry was like, "What kind of music do you want?" And I said, "Well, just play some UK music," and you know, we was all vibing, dancing, and whatever, enjoying ourselves. And I happened to score, so I think that kind of um, gave me a little bit of you know, like I'm welcoming the team sort of thing, you know. So. Yeah. Um, no, it was great. It was a great day, I think. It was a great celebration that um, I need to work on my celebration. So. <laughs> and then you moved on from, you eventually moved on from Arsenal. Yeah. Had a good career at Middlesbrough. You was at Middlesbrough for, for quite a while, weren't you? Yeah, I was at Middlesbrough for like six, seven years. Um, and for me, it was a good move because at the time I wasn't playing at Arsenal. I think I played one game before I kind of, you know, left or Middlesbrough showed interest. Um I think at the time Aston Villa were interested, but for whatever reason, Arsenal said no. Um, but no, when Middlesbrough come calling, I said, you know, I jump at the opportunity. Um, spoke to Arsene Wenger at the time. He said it'd be great for my career, great for my development and to play regular football. Um, mm. And for me, it was either a decision, do I stay at Arsenal and just be happy to say I'm an Arsenal player and um, sit on the, sit maybe on the bench or just in the squad and be happy to train at Arsenal? Or do I go out um, and make a career, a name for myself somewhere else and play... Um, as many games as possible um, and I think I achieved that by playing over 160 games for Middlesbrough so uh, mm. for me that that was more important than just sitting and saying I'm, I'm an Arsenal player even though it was a hard decision to make leaving your boyhood dream but um, for my personal career and development I think it was the best move. Yeah and then obviously you, you, after that you've had many other clubs you you played for you at Sunderland I remember um, you saying you was at I didn't remember you at Millwall, but you said you was at Millwall. Yeah, you don't need to remember that. That was a bad time, so no one needs to remember. <laughs> All right, that's why I don't remember. <laughs> I don't think many people remember me at Millwall. That was a terrible time. I mean, I first played the first couple games with Ian Dowie, and then after that, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it was it was it was a it was a challenging time. Just say at Millwall, it was a, it was a tough time. Uh, and then you played it, and then over to America, you've been. Um, you know, played a couple of non-league, but then you've been at the in the you went in the MLS as well. Yeah, I went in the MLS. Yeah, so I was in like the second league um, with FC Cincinnati, which is, uh, was in the USL, which is like the Championship of America. Um, mm. and, you know, we got um, the bid to get in the MLS. So I played in the MLS, so um, it's been good in in Cincinnati. I got um, a good connection with the fans, and I felt like I got the love back for the game of of football. Really, um, going mm. to Cincinnati. And playing in front of 30,000 plus um, most weeks at home, I think we had a kind of a European vibe um, mm. and it helped and, and, and the fans were electric. So it was really, really good. I enjoyed mm. uh, I am on the field there and, and in, the, in the city. What's the, what's the MLS like? Because, um, I mean, we see they show it, they show it over here on TV. Um, yep. on Sky. Obviously not at the moment because there is no MLS, but um, they show the MLS. Always looks like there's some really good crowds there. I went mm -hmm. to I went to um an Atlanta United game. Oh, that's amazing! I'd love to last oh, summer. Well, first of all, that stadium is unbelievable. And, yeah, it's amazing. And also the support they had was unbelievable. The atmosphere was great, mm -hmm. and it was a good standard. You know, I mean, they they you know they, they were good. They, they yeah. had a guy up front. I've forgotten his name. Um, I think he was from 
Paraguay or something. He, he was he, he could Martin, play in the Premier League, I think. God Martinez and they had Almiron maybe as well from the one that's gone. To no, Almiron had, Almiron had left already. He must be oh, yeah. yeah. Um, he Martinez. was good. Yeah, he's a good yeah. player. Good player. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, the standard looks good. I mean, what's it like? No, it's a good, really good standard. Really, really good standard. A lot of people don't realise. Um, it looks a bit different on TV, of course. Um, but no, it's a really good standard. Some top, top players are playing in America. Um, and a lot younger players now are, are heading to America um, mm. earlier on in the career. But no, it's a really good standard. Um, you wouldn't think it is, but no, it's, it's a really good standard. There's some really, really talented players. And I think that kind of shows now um, with Premier League and European clubs looking at um, MLS players to, to take them to their team. So I mm. think it's a great league and a league that a lot of people will look out for in the, in the coming years yeah um it was uh paul making was also asking that question what is the standard of football um in the mls and as you said it's good and obviously where you are now miami beckham's just got a team there as well hasn't he yeah beckham's got his team in miami so everyone's talking about you know his team at the moment um and what they're going to do everyone's interested in what they're doing and um they're building a new stadium um mm. but they're building something great and I think it, it will only help um, the city of Miami um, fall in love with the game and also it help us as, as a you know second team kind of in Miami so um, I think in that sense football here is growing um, and in within a couple of years it'll be a, a huge sport here uh, might not overtake basketball um, but for sure it's, it's a growing sport here in Miami and it's funny because you see before lockdown a lot of kids playing football in the park um, and you speak to people before that never used to happen. Um, so you can see just the, the growth um, and mm. the impact I think Beckham will have on the city, um, which will only benefit um, the team I'm with at the moment. What, what I've also noticed when I've seen like football in America, places where there's a, a lot of Hispanic people, there's always a big interest in football. And Miami does have a big Hispanic population, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It's a, it's a huge population. And I feel that's the passion that um, drives the fans to the games. And, you know, they're passionate fans and they love they love football. So um, I think you'll get a lot of uh, Hispanic people um, to the games and a lot of Americans will, will buy into that and, and love the game also. So um, it's their fan base is, is, is crazy and it's a growing fan base. And um, you'll probably see when Inter Miami get going and they're, they're allowed fans back into the stadiums that, um, the atmosphere will be electric for sure, um, and it have mm. like a European vibe to it. Brilliant. Um, Paul Wadey says, uh, "What's up, Justin? Saw you play some of your games with Dagenham and Redbridge." Yeah, yeah, we got old Dagenham and Redbridge. Yeah, um, that was after Millwall. I mean, I didn't have a club for a few months, um, and one of my close friends, Andre Bucard, said, "You know, why don't you come down and, and just train instead of just running by yourself?" Mm. Um, so I said, "Yeah, I'll take the opportunity. Why not? You know, to keep training and playing, but." Um, and then I got asked to, to sign for the team, uh, which was, was good that, um, you know, in football, when you're not seen, um, no one knows what you're doing. Um, so it was a chance to, to revive my career and carry on playing. So um, I had a good time at Dagenham. Uh, we played some good football, um, but it was also a, a challenging time, for sure. Um, Dr. Viraz says, uh, hi, Robbie. Question for Justin. Who amongst the current crop of youngsters in the Arsenal squad do you see having the potential to be the next big thing in football? Oh, that's tough. That's a tough question. Um, I think with Arsenal, I think only time will tell with the young ones. Um, there's some good young players playing at the moment. Um, I hope they can keep their place in the team and perform well. Um, but I think only time will tell. Hopefully they don't bring in um, too many older experienced players to, to take their position. Um, but for sure, let's hope that um, the players playing now will stay in there and, and keep their place. That's one of the things that we, we in a lot of the shows that we've been doing recently, um, we've been discussing what it's like when you're a young player. Mm -hmm. well, we already sort of spoke about it, like in your case, mm -hmm. you're a young player, you're trying to break into the team, but you've got people like Lauren there. I think you had a Bue there as well. You know what I mean? you got... And you, yeah, you, yeah. you must be there sometimes as a guy that's come through the academy thinking to yourself, I hope they don't sign no one in, in my yeah, position. Yeah. Stick with me. I want to, you know what I mean? But it must be really hard because basically you're playing for a team that they will go out there and sign a player from abroad or whatever yeah, in course. your position, which mm -hmm. then makes your job 
even harder? I mean, is it good competition or is it sometimes you just think, come on, why have you signed this guy? We didn't, you know, we've got homegrown guys there who can do this better. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think, you know, you want to you wanna believe that you've got the chance and you want to, you know, the manager or the team to keep faith in you. And I think just before I, I even broke into the first team, I thought, you know, I was right behind Lauren. And then um, before I moved up to the first team, they signed a buoy. So it was kind of like, well, wow, like, what, where do I stand now, you know? Um, and then I got my chance playing alongside Abui also, um, the two of us. And then, um, you know, a week or a little season or two after, they brought in Sagna. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, mean, I kind of knew um, that that was going to happen. Um, you know, it's not, it wasn't rocket science. Uh, they kind of bring in um, players that do a job that you can't. Um, and I remember a scout telling me when I first went to Arsenal that um, no matter what position you are in um, or how you're performing, um, the club or clubs will always look for someone else who can do something that you can't. Um, and I always remember that. So I guess in some of the games, I didn't do what the manager wanted or what the team wanted. So they looked elsewhere. Um, but you obviously, as a young player, would hope that um, they stuck with you for... Uh, more games or giving you a chance to 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 find your feet and and give yourself time to to mold into the team and mold into the player you want to be hmm. uh k7 says uh your opinions on bellerin maitland niles and possibly cedric they're all right back obviously we've got three right backs now really well maitland niles is sort of having to sort of fill in as a right back recently late in the i think he's kind of filling everywhere um, I quite like Bellerin. I think he's all right. I think he does a job for, for what Arsenal need at the moment. Um, and I think he's done all right. Um, mm. You know, his injuries, which has um, obviously ham hampered his performance and um, set him back um, quite a lot. So I think hopefully he can overcome his, his injuries and, and, and pick back up his, his form and um, get back to, to how he was playing when he first arrived at Arsenal, uh, which mm. would be a big help for, for the team. Maitland Niles is an interesting one because he's had to yeah. kind of fill in in mm -hmm. that position. Um, and he's kind of at times sort of said, oh, you know, I'm a, I want to play in midfield. Yeah. Do, do you think he should have just said, oh, you know what, oh, let me just settle for right back? Or is it right as a young player to say, no, nah, actually, midfield is my play. I, I want to play in that position. Or should you just uh, – it's, it's, it's kind of hard on him. But yeah, I think it's kind of hard on him because – he probably knows his natural position, you know, um, and where he feels he's more comfortable playing. But at the same time, you know, the club or the manager feels like you're better at this position. Um, so in that sense, he's been, he performed some good games at, at right back. So um, they must have seen something in him to, for him to put, put him in there, you know. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, sometimes as a young one, you want to play in your own position. But um, I think sometimes you just have to accept it and just say, look, this is where they think I'm best at. Um, you know, let me perform as the best as I can. Um, mm. But, you know, at the same time, tell them, if I ever get an opportunity, can I show you what my abilities are in this position? Mm. Um, because I know back in my days, it was like, um, you know, if the, play, if the team put you somewhere, that's it. You can't tell them, I want to be somewhere else. They're putting you where they think you're, you're the best, mm. where they can get the best out of you, really. Um, so I think that's where they feel they can put him, but um, it'll be interesting to see what what happens with him. Actually, I'll be interested to see. Yeah. Um, what, um, you know, a right back here. What is the skill set? What do you need to be that modern day right back? What does it take? Modern day right back now. I think modern need... day right back right now. What do you think you need? If you was if you look at a young player now and you say right modern day right back this is what you're going to have to have what what would it be i think for me now the the fullback position is really really changed and i think uh, they're more involved in games than ever before um i think kind of danny alvis kind of changed that um, mm. they're not just literally stuck on on the right side and just you know going up and down the field they're all over the field now um and i think now as a right back um, you need to be good at crossing um, I feel like you need to have pace. You need to be good 1v1 defending. Um, and I think you need to be good on the ball. Um, and you also need to have stamina and a good engine to be able to get up and down the field for the whole 90 minutes. Um, mm. Because that takes now to, to be a good right back, for sure, um, in this modern day era. And I think mm. you have to 
better on the ball now than you've ever had to be. Yeah. Um, this guy uh, says, hello, uh, Robbie. Uh, ask Justin, uh, what was the one thing he learned from these players like Vieira, Burkamp, and Tony Adams, huge legends at um, Arsenal? For me, Patrick Vieira was, was stand out for me the most. Um, I think just for his leadership um, and how he was, uh, not just with the players, um, not just with the staff, but I think everyone around uh, the training, the training round. He looked after everybody, um, and just his professionalism um, on and off the field, um, which I'll take um, with me and I try and use, um, you know, with the teams I've been at. Um, mm. And no, he's just leadership, just the way he carries himself and and performs on the field, and he, you can see the examples he set on everyone else. Um, Kartik says, as a right back himself. He's asking you this question. Trent mm. Alexander-Arnold or Wan-Bissaka? For me, I'll say Trent Alexander, um, just mm. because I think he's a lot better on the ball um, than Wan-Bissaka. Um, Wan-Bissaka is a great 1v1 defender. Um, I don't think there's many people that will get past him. Um, mm. But I think in the modern day um, generation, I think Trent Alexander has, has it all. Um, and I think he would be developing to you know, the next best right back. Um, potentially in, in, in uh, modern day football. Um, so for me, I think Trent Alexander um, is, is ahead of Wan Bissaka at the moment. Mm. Um, Jam 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 says a question for Justin. What advice would you give to a person who is trying to make it in football? Uh, my best advice is never give up, um, keep working hard at your craft, um, master a technique, um, do to your best ability. And literally just keep training, 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 um, and never give up on your hopes or dreams. Okay. Um, Lone Star Londoner says, Justin, do you think that um, Pepe lacks confidence, particularly in light of the fact that Emery wasn't his, uh, it wasn't Emery's first choice signing? Um, how does the, that scenario impact a player? And then he says, bring back Lauren, proper defender. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A great defender, trust me. We had a Good battles, me and not. Um, but no, I think Pepe is low on confidence. I think you can see that in a lot of games that Arsenal played and that he's played in. Uh, I think when he's feeling good in games, um, I think he's performed well for Arsenal. Um, but I think in football, uh, confidence is a huge thing. And not many people know when you're low on confidence, I think it's hard to, to bring yourself back up. And uh, when confidence is in you're down on confidence, there's no way you're going to perform to your best ability. Mm. Um, so I think he needs to get back to believing in himself, maybe get back to doing the basics and doing the, the great things what Arsenal saw and why they signed him. Um, but no, it'd be a great attribute to Arsenal once he gains that confidence. Um, but yeah, no, I, think, when... I think he's a good player. You think he's good? Yeah, yeah, I like him. And I think, I think, I agree with what you're saying with the confidence is, you know, he's, he's coming into a new team. Yeah, I think next season is going to be the season where he's going to step it up. Yeah, I hope so. But it also takes time, you know, because he's also got to adjust to the Premier League. Um, mm. I feel like some players adjust to the Premier League a lot quicker than others. So I think he's still got to adjust. And I think it was a difficult time for him to come in at Arsenal um, yeah. because they were performing well. And no one was sure what the best 11 was, what the best team was or what the best squad was. So it was a transition time. So... Hopefully, he can settle in and play regular games and, and gain that confidence back just mm. from playing. And um, Arteta giving him that confidence to, to go out and perform. Mm. Um, Mike Dennis says, Justin, do you think Arsenal would succeed under Arteta? And also, Omar says, question for Justin, do you think Arteta is the man to get us challenging again? I mean, what do you think of Arteta? Have you been pleased with, uh, with him so far? I mean, I guess so. Yeah, I think I am. Um... You know, who at the moment there's, there's no really other managers that will play the style of football that Arsenal fans know. Really, you know, mm. uh, I think Arsenal fans are used to a certain style of play, and I think you know what Arteta has learned uh, playing at Arsenal, uh, mm. being at the club, and working under Guardiola. I think he has the the right DNA to to get Arsenal playing um, the the great football that we're used to watching and and playing. So. Um, do I think he's right, man, at the moment? Yes. Um, but I think it'll take time. Um, he's got to want to bring in players that fit the, the style of play he wants. Um, and it won't be easy, of course. Um, but for sure, I think um, given a little bit of time, 
I think you'd be the right person um, for, for the club moving forward. Um, Adam G says, who's your favourite teammate at Arsenal? Who was your favourite teammate at Arsenal? Oh, my favourite teammate at Arsenal. Um, I think I'll say I was pretty close with Theo Walcott, um, just because at the time we was um, kind of like the only few English players there. Um, <laughs> so we was quite close in that sense. Um, but yeah, I mean, I got on with a lot of people. Um, I still speak to Yo Andrew, um, Fabrice Mwamba, you know, a lot of players mm. that was in the academy when I was there that um, we kind of developed into the first team together. So I'll say... Academy. Yeah. You, yeah. Had a serious, you, you had some seriously good players in that academy. Now, listen, let me ask you this question. Yeah. Again, were, were you just around at the wrong time? There's so many. you At that academy, you had some excellent players, but you're just going to... Yeah. It's very difficult to break into the team with all the players that stood in front of you. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was a tough time to, to try to even, um, I think at the time it was even hard to even get a, a, a training session with the first team. So to even break in the first team, mm. the hardest thing possible at the time at Arsenal was, and I think, you know, us young players in the academy or trying to break into the first team, we knew that our only chance was in the League Cup. Um, so we knew we had to perform in that. And even then, some of us weren't going to play. Um, and I think in the League Cup, we've done quite well as, as young players playing in it. We won a lot of games. Um, but yeah, I think at the time, was I around at the wrong time? Maybe yes. Um, but at the same time, I feel like I was around at the right time. Um, I think it was a great Arsenal team to, to be a part of, um, even mm. if I was on the squad, um, you know, watching the games. But at the same time, I've got a lot of game time. So uh, do I wish I was around at another time and got more games? Yes. But um, at the same time, I was around at a great time. Uh, mm. To be involved in the Invincibles was was mm. unbelievable. What a dream come true. Uh, the main Anon says, uh, was, there any, was there any players you played with at Arsenal's youth level that you thought would make it to the top but didn't? And he's put Jerome Thomas and David Bentley in there. Yeah, them two are great players. I mean, they, they made it, um, they I guess. Made, David Bentley made it. Yeah, Bentley made it well. Um, mm. Did they have their full potential? Um, and go on and do well at Arsenal? No, but at the same time, they was probably around at the wrong time also. Um, mm. David Bentley obviously went to Tottenham, um, but uh, and then he decided to, to finish football. But um, no, there was a lot, a lot of um, young players in the academy that um, didn't make the grade or didn't make to, to the first team that I thought were definitely going to make it. Um, there was, I think there's like a full list if you go back to like the academy days that the youth cup winning team and um, that we had it was full of names and full of top top players that didn't make it in the first team and I feel um, at the time at Arsenal in the under 17s and the reserves teams there was full of players that now probably would be playing in the first team mm. so is it then sometimes as a player especially like you see like now mm -hmm. Could you argue that sometimes you're better off not being at a team like Arsenal as a young player? Because if, you, if you're, if you say, let's just say, for instance, you're at Norwich, mm -hmm. you're going to get more first-team football than being at Arsenal because there's less people standing in your way. Mm -hmm. And I think, yeah, maybe at the lower clubs, uh, they look at their youth setup um, more so than, than Arsenal. I mean, Arsenal are doing so a bit more, but... Um, I think it's just the way um, clubs are set up. Um, so, yeah, you know, even back when I was playing, a lot of players left Arsenal to go somewhere else to, to try and gain that first team regular football a bit earlier than they would at Arsenal. Um, mm. uh, but I think sometimes you just have to be a bit patient um, and bide your time because um, sometimes if you, never, if you don't make it at Arsenal, you've always got that behind you that you've played in Arsenal's first team, you've, you've been through the whole academy and people look at that as a sign mm. to say they are really football educated. Um, and then teams like Norwich or some of the other teams um, in the lower half of the premiership will look at that um, and then you can move on there after. Um, whereas sometimes if you don't make it in say like the Norwich first team um, as a young player, um, then you know, you're only looking at kind of championship teams. So, in that sense, you, you, as a first team, as a young guy, you really want to play, you know, for the first team of Arsenal. But sometimes um, that might not be possible. So you have to look at other options. Okay. Um, 
This guy says, I really thought Justin would be our starting right back. There was a point where he was flying. And if memory serves me right, uh, correctly, sorry, he says injury robbed him of that chance. Good to see him after so many years. You did have a few injury problems, didn't you? Yeah, I had a lot of hamstring injuries, um, which being a sprint-based and um, fast person, you get hamstring injuries. And I remember, I think I tore my hamstring um, in the League Cup final, I think against Chelsea. Mm. Um, and a lot of people didn't know it. So I pulled my hamstring before the game even started, uh, which Ooh. a lot of people about that yeah so i played with a torn hamstring the whole game um but yes. yeah yeah for, yeah but for me it was the i didn't want to stop playing because it was the say the first time of me playing in a cup final for arsenal and that's like a boyhood dream you know so uh, i had to play i wasn't going to stop playing so mm. however i finished the game i finished the game and uh we didn't get the victory um i probably didn't play to my best because i was you know had a well, half a leg, um, mm. but you know, I, I wasn't going to stop um, me playing it, and I wasn't. I had to play that game, no matter what the outcome was. I had to play. Mm. What do you think of the young players at the moment? Right, there's a, there's a lot of young players mm. that are now looking to go abroad. Yeah. To, yeah, yeah. So we've seen Jaden Sancho, mm -hmm. who incidentally, I was talking to somebody today. I didn't realize this that Jaden Sancho was actually scouted first by Arsenal. Oh, and was they, it? And they, yeah. didn't, and they didn't take him on, which yeah, is yeah. hard to believe. But um, he ended up at Man City, couldn't get any game time at Man City, and has moved to Borussia Dortmund now. And now he's like one of his star players in Germany. Man United looking to sign him for 100 million. Is that Kaya Matundo, is, it, is it his name? Is he? He's currently, I think, at Schalke. There's yeah, young players over here now that are looking at Germany and looking yeah. abroad. To go and play. I mean, which is something that never really happened a lot. What, what, what do you think of all that? I think that's the new modern day. I think I think a lot of players are looking at it now. Like Jordan Sancho is an example that um, if the opportunity um, not to play at high level or the top teams in in England, they're looking at um, top teams in Europe. And I think you know from our football education um, as young young players in the academies, um, I think they fit the style of European play perfect. Um, and, you know, look at Sancho, he's got a bit of confidence playing well and now everyone's talking about him as the next big star. Um, so I think a lot more younger players, if they're not getting the opportunity, will look um, abroad first, um, then look in England first. I, I think they can cement their place um, abroad with teams rather than um, mm. in, in, say, England. So, so I think that's going to happen a lot more. Mm. Uh, Victor says, as members of the black community, kindly share a word or two for George Floyd tragedy in the USA. Sorry for changing the topic. That's been horrible, that is. And yeah, no, yeah, that's yeah, that's that's horrible. It's not been nice to 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 see or or you know mm. what right now in America. I mean, it's it's just a common theme at the moment in America. Um, it's been happening a lot. Um, so me being out here now, you know, you mm. worry it's gonna happen. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a horrible and it's it's not nice at all. And um, you know, I think we're doing the right things to to fight against it. Mm. Um, I think it's it's I think it's still part of in in modern day life. Um, I think it's still racism still goes on uh, everywhere. I think not just in in America, but I think everywhere in the world. And mm. uh, I think it's only time that times will change and. There's certain things that will need to change um, in order for certain things to stop. But it, it's it's a horrible thing that that has happened, and I don't wish that upon anyone. And no, it's uh, terrible, terrible, it a horrible situation. Uh, mm. But yeah, really, really tough at the moment. Yeah. Uh, Guna Gamer uh, TV says, "Big up Robbie, hi Hoity." He said, uh, "You said Arsene Wenger was very laid back. Um, did he leave it to the squad to dr drill and train themselves?" The majority of the time, well, I say he was laid back, but if we ever lost, he would you would know about it if we lost. <laughs> mm. uh, yeah, I think so. I think he kind of um, before games, after games, he didn't really say much. Um, I think he kind of left it to the locker room and to the players. Um, and I think in that sense, he had that feeling that we should win most games. Um, so I guess you know he's he's the type of manager that if he didn't perform well, or the team didn't win. He was thinking why the team didn't win. Um, you know, we played the best football, but sometimes you don't win every game. Mm. Um, so I think he kind of left it to to the to the players in the locker room to 
um, to self-manage um, and he just overlooked it. But um, I say he was laid back, but I'm telling you, when we lost games, we, we knew about it. Mm. Oh, Andreas says, uh, how do you reckon you'll get for young talent? How we, I think he means, how do you reckon you're going to get young talent now that you've sacked the scouts because of COVID-19? This is a story today um, that's been in one of the papers over here that Arsenal have... Um, the part-time scouts at Arsenal, mm -hmm. they said to them, you know, we're not going to keep you on. Oh, okay, um, yeah. Reapply yeah, yeah. again in September. Obviously, there's no games for them to watch. Of course, yeah. From what I understand, I've kind of done a bit of digging into that story since. And from okay. what I understand, they haven't sacked all the scouts. It's just like mm -hmm. some of the part-time scouts, okay. and they will be able to reapply. But scouts are very important, aren't they? I mean, yeah, they are. you would have been Arsenal without a scout, would you? Yeah, no, I mean, you wouldn't. Um, and there's scouts all over the world for Arsenal that not a lot of many people know. Um, mm. And there's uh, every game. Um, every game you go to or, or play, there's scouts there from every club. Um, mm. Scouts all over the world. Um, and I think the, the scouting database, I think, is, is crazy. Um, the amount of players that Arsenal used to watch um, that are now performing well, um, that Arsenal first was watching um, and they knew about, it is mm. crazy. And like I said before, the scout who scouted me was the, the head scout, um, Steve Rowley and, and Dave Holden um, at Arsenal. Mm. I'm always told that they're always looking for something else and they're always looking for a new player. Um, no matter how well you're performing, they're always looking for someone else who can add something to the team that you can't or just add something else to the team that will, will help the team. Mm. I think what's it, that, that story about the scouts, what kind of wound me up about it is that they're not on a lot of money. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's the that's the that's those because right. you, 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 if they just spot one player, like even yeah, the, I, the scout who spotted you now, yeah, surely just by spotting you, and your move to Sunderland and stuff like that, he, he probably paid his wages. He could have paid for ten scouts yeah, for the yeah. next ten years because they don't get much money, do they? No, they don't get much money, and, and they have to scout all the time, and sometimes they have to go places they don't want to, but. Um, that's their job, you know. Um, and no, they don't, they get, don't get the recognition either. Yeah, they don't get no, they don't get recognition. Um, you know, there's a lot of scouts all over, like I say, that were scout players, and they'll sign for Arsenal, and you will never even know mm. which scout scouted them. You know, um, and I actually know like an ex player who used to play for Arsenal was a scout um, out in America, and I, I spoke to him about it um, just briefly, just to find out his experience. Um, but yeah, it, it's a crazy experience as, as a scout, yeah. and glad to hear that for them. For sure. You know, you'll always hear like uh, the managers and that taking credit. So I'll be like, yeah. oh, where did you find this young kid? Yeah, well, we saw him playing at, hold on, that had nothing to do with you. That was a yeah. scout that found yeah, scout that do a lot of the, a lot of the, the finding of players, I'm telling you. It's the scouts that find all the players, trust me. And then the manager will get the credit for it. But I think the scout just feeds back to the manager and then the manager will take a, a close look maybe on videos and stuff. But um, I think the manager will tell the scout what he's kind of looking for. Mm. Um, and then once he's given the feedback, the manager will then go and check and then we'll take uh, mm. the credit for it. With, with Arsenal's academy at the moment, are you happy with what you're seeing? I mean, there's some good young players coming through. Saka has been absolutely incredible. Yeah. Uh, Joe, yeah. Willock. Joe Willock, which kind of reminds me. Joe Willock, uh, you know why he reminds me of you? Because it's like the brother connection, like. Oh yeah, yeah. And it's, Chris Willock is same with you and Gavin. That sort of brothers, two brothers, sort of starting off at the same club. But you got, you got Willock, you've got Smith Rowe, you know, you've got these young players that have come through the academy. Maitland Nars as well, Eddie and Ketia, and they're getting a chance as well. They, they, you know, quite a lot of them getting a chance. Yeah. You you think the academy's in a good place at the moment? I think it's in a good place. Um, that only shows by how many players are coming through at the moment and trying to fight for the first team, for a first team spot and getting a chance in the first team and getting um, good game time. So I think it's in a, in a good way. Um, it can be better, but um, I think at the moment it's doing well. And, you know, at the end of the day, Academy just wants to produce players into the first team. Um, mm. And I think a lot of players there that you've just mentioned have been there since they were kids. Mm. Um, and I was going to watch my brother and seeing some of them playing. Um, so I think they would, they would have been like nine or ten um, when I used to go and watch my brother play and, they was, and I was watching them, you know, as small little kids playing. So to now see them in the first team um, or even in the squads is, is, is great and 
um, credit to, to the Arsenal Academy and I hope they, they continue to do great things. Mm. Um, K7 says, how was working with Lauren? <laughs> um, it was good and tough at the same time. Um, I'll be honest, it was good but tough at the same time. I think with Lauren, he kind of felt like I was coming for a spot, which I was. Um, but yeah, um, when I first got into the to the team and stuff, he wasn't very welcoming. But um, after a while, he was he was he was good working with him, and I learned a lot um, just from his style of play and how he was as a person. But um, I think he kind of felt threatened at first um, by me, obviously, because um, you know, as you bring in someone younger um, and energetic and that wants to take your spot, really. Um, so I think he. Felt that must be hard as a footballer, man. You know what I mean? He's like, you're playing week in, week out, and then some young thing just comes along and <laughs> plays out the place and everyone's talking about him, and you're thinking, yo. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I mean, I admit that, yeah, of course, of course. And the way I look at it is like, I have to do what I need to do to take his spot. And he's doing all he has to do to, to keep his spot in the team because he knows if he doesn't do his job, then I'm going to come and play and, and try and take his spot, and then he'll have to move on. Or... Um, if he's performing well, he knows he will stay in the team. So I think that's kind of healthy competition. Um, mm. But no, it, it was good. I mean, you know, you have battles as, as defenders because you both, you're both fighting for one spot. Um, but no, working with someone like Loren, who's won stuff and performed so well for Arsenal, uh, was great. It was, was, was good. Mm. But you know, the day I wanted to take his spot, of course. Here's a question for you from Sam Parker. He says, who was better, Justin or Gavin? Uh, good question. Um, it's a tough question. Uh, I would like to say that um, my brother was better. Um, yeah. Just, yeah, just because um, for me, I don't like to say I'm better than my brother. Um, I always want my brother to do well um, and do better than what I did. Um, he was, at, when I was, you know, his age or he was my age, um, back then he was the fastest at Arsenal. Um, and I always want the best for him. So, um, we never kind of say who's better around the place or to each other because we want the best for each other. Um, but, you know, I say my brother was, was, was better. Yeah, of course. Um, I'm never going to say I was better than my brother for sure because I always want the best for him. So I'd never say I'm better than him. Mm. And it must have been, must have been great for your, your parents. Now, you, you could have – you played for England on the 21s. Yep. You also played for Trinidad. Yeah, <laughs> what was that like? And how did you how did you manage to do that? How did, how did you play for England under twenty ones and then and then also play for Trinidad? How, how could you do both? Um, because I had never played um, a senior game for for England, um, so you're still entitled to play for another national team. If you've not oh, sorry, I lost the volume a bit then. Hello. Yeah, I got you now. I got you now. Yeah, so because I wasn't, uh, I didn't make a first team appearance for England or a senior cap for England, and I was able to to play for Trinidad. And my dad was born in Trinidad, um, and my you know family background is from Trinidad and Barbados. So um, Trinidad called me before to be part of the World Cup squad. Mm. Um, I, yeah, I wish I would. Yeah. yeah, I wish I would. You, you turned it down. Yeah, because at the time I was with the England under twenty ones, and there was talk of me, um, you know, getting into the England senior team. Um, so I haven't played for so many years um, for the youth team of England. Um, I wanted to try and stick with that, you know, to give it a go, to get an English cap, you know, it would be amazing. Mm. Um, and then to get the call from Trinidad to play in the World Cup, it was kind of like, um, you know, I wasn't there from the beginning through the qualifiers, through the, the hard work of getting to the World Cup. So I didn't want to take someone else's spot who had been through that whole thing, you know. I've mm. uh, been through the whole process, so I kind of turned it down, which I wish I never. Um, but when I got the opportunity to to go again and be a part of um, the new rebuilding of the Trinidad national team, I jumped at it and said, yeah, straight away. Uh, but no, I really enjoyed my time. We had a good squad um, mm. in that Trinidad team. We, we won a lot of games and uh, we started making a lot of noise um, in Trinidad. Oh, good boys. But again. Uh, yeah, the Soccer Warriors, yeah. Yeah, made a lot of noise around the place. Uh, Trinidad got the love back for for the game, and uh, we done really well. Got into the World Cup qualifiers, and we got into um, the last group stage of the Hex. Uh, mm. Unfortunately, the manager changed, and then players changed. So um, 
we would have done. I think we would have qualified for the World Cup if we would have kept the manager and the players together, um, just because we had a total understanding. But mm. uh, unfortunately, that didn't happen. So um, I'm still eligible to play now. Um, so we'll see what happens. All right. Um, I was going to ask you this now. Obviously, what are you 35 now? 35 now, yeah. Even though you you don't look you don't look nowhere near 35. You're looking. I'm trying to look younger, you know. Nowadays, you've got to try and look younger. I can't look yeah. older, you know. <laughs> you're looking younger. You're looking in good shape. I'm trying. I'm trying. Yeah. But 35, yep. unfortunately, you are starting to go towards the latter yeah, days. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. I didn't want to say that, but right. Yeah, I know, I know. Don't worry. You can say it. I tell people. What's next after that? What about management? I you, you, about, you, I you, about you, management and coaching, but I'm not sure. I, I don't know. Sometimes I tell myself yes. Sometimes I tell myself no. Um, I have like, I've got a tactics board here. Um, I know the two systems I want to play. I know the type of players I'd want to sign, and I think about that all the time. Um, so I do think about coaching and management. Um, but I think when you go into management, I think it's completely different than you sitting at home and talking about it. Uh, trying to keep every player happy, even the ones that are not playing, I think is one of the hardest things to do. Um, but for me, at the moment, I'm trying to play for an extra five more years. Um, nice. Yeah, I'm trying to, trying to get to 40 if I can. Um, wow. So hopefully with this team in Miami, I can achieve that. Um, mm. But at the same time, I'm working with them um, off the field also. So I'm kind of having that transition of going straight from playing. Um, I'm working um, part of the club after that in whatever role that might be. Maybe a technical mm. director, maybe a coach, uh, maybe head of the youth development. Um, we're not quite sure yet. It's it's an open position right now. Oh, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. Um. Greg Football TV says, Robbie, uh, Justin, I, I think he's touted himself here. He says, I live in New Orleans and I play in a park. Um, I think he says he plays a uh, central midfield or left wing. Okay. Can, you me, can you give me a scout number? <laughs> also, uh, name your starting 11 versus City. It's not as easy as that, just getting a scout number. No, got- no, 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 I don't, I don't know what scout number you can get. I'd have to go on the internet to find some scouts for him, but I can scout him if he wants to my team. <laughs> <laughs> well, send the video, send the video. Um, yeah, send the video, yeah, we can get your scout video. We can send it and I'll see you. Not at 11, we'll do that nearer that City game, right? Because uh, people have been asking me for that a lot. We'll do that nearer the City game. Um, Trent Singh says, uh, hi, Robbie, question for Justin. Who was the toughest attacker you played against? Um, in your era, there were some great attackers, RVP, Drogba, Torres, etc. Who was the the best you played against? Hard, who think, the hardest time? I say that one person who would give me a hard time, and I always say it to everyone, I said, I am Robin. Um, oh, yeah, he when good. he was at Chelsea, he used to give me a headache. And I mean, I used to lose sleep against playing against him. And I, I tell you, uh, people might think it was Ronaldo, but... Iron Robin, he was the toughest person to play against. Listen, man, uh, I could have coached you and told you how to deal with him, man. He always cuts inside. No, no, but you think you can just stop him like that, but you can't. Trust me, I tried many times. <laughs> and even when you try and stop him going inside, he will go on the outside and still beat you and then come back and come inside. So Listen, you show him, him Iron Robin, you show him on the outside, and if he comes inside, you chop him down. Yeah, you, you can try, but trust me. <laughs> Hey, trust me, believe me, it sounds easy, but do you know how many people have tried to do that and they cannot do it? No, he's good, man. I, I remember. For me, he mastered that technique. So yeah, he was. Yeah, playing against someone who mastered that is is that's a credit to him, you know. And yeah. even now, even before he retired, you know, people still couldn't stop that. And trust me, it was it was a headache playing against him. The way I remember that game when we played Bayern when he beat us when they beat us five two. Yeah. Right? I mean, that shows he was good. When he went to Bayern, he's even better. Yeah. He's just terrorizing. And he's so quick. And yeah, he's just like a whippet, it, isn't it? It's hard to yeah, deal with. Yeah, like, yeah, it's hard it? to deal with. When you've got someone who's fast like that and all left footed, it's, it's so hard to, to play against as a defender. Even though you're fast, he's just as fast. And he's even faster with the ball. Mm. Uh, I think his checking and speed and everything is just frightening. So, I mean, I, I watch games when he was playing, and I'm like, but stop getting him on his left foot. Stop getting him on his left foot. Don't let him come inside. Don't let him come inside. But then I'm looking at the defenders. They're doing what they're meant to be doing. But he's mastered how to to combat someone trying to stop him from going on his left foot, you know? Mm. Um, so, I no, that's a world-class player. 
I thought he was going to say Ronaldo. I did thought he was going to say Cristiano Ronaldo. No, for me, when he was at uh, United, I think he was doing more skills. Um, and I think um, Iron Robin was more direct. Mm. He would just get the ball and come at you um, nonstop the whole game. 90 minutes, he wouldn't stop. Um, whereas I think Ronaldo would kind of be in the game for a little bit, do a couple of tricks, go at you for a little bit and then um, stop for a little while. So um, in that sense, I think Iron Robin was just non-stop for the 90 minutes. It was just pure heading. Mm. Do, 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 do you, like, with somebody like Cristiano Ronaldo, because obviously you were playing against him when he was just sort of, again, just starting off. He's mm -hmm. similar ages, actually. Mm -hmm. Can you believe what he's done with his career? I, I think mean, it's I think it's amazing what he's done, and that's credit to him because he's stuck at it, um, no matter what anyone said about him. And I think his dedication and his um, attitude to, to working and wanting to be the best is, is why he's one of the best now. Mm. Um, and that's just credit to, to what he is. Um, you saw glimpses of what he was doing at United um, in games. Um, and I think he, that just elevated his, his confidence. Um, and, you know, what he done at Madrid and now at Juventus is, mm. you know, unbelievable. Um, and he always had that in him. So um, I think the Man United thing was a whole starting point and, and the, the start point for him to, to achieve great things. And it's credit to, to how he works and his dedication mm. to, the, to the game. And Mike says, uh, what's one thing you would have changed in your career? Um, I don't think there's anything. Maybe going to Millwall, but um, no, no, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, for me, I, don't, I wouldn't change anything. Um, I don't have any regrets. don't want to change anything in my career because if I were to change something in my career, my path wouldn't be the same. Um, and I'm kind of happy the way my path went um, because I had high moments and I had low moments. And I guess that's the same in life. Um, and I just think it's just lessons learned. Um, and I think the stuff I went through um, in my career has molded me into the person I am today uh, and the person I want to be uh, once I retire and be able to, to give back uh, my experience to, to other players. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, Emmanuel says, uh, what do you think of the current squad and when do you think we'll be able to challenge again? Uh, the current squad now. Um, I think the current squad will be rebuilt, I think. Um, obviously, we don't know what's going to happen now with this COVID in the transfer market and whatever not. Um, mm. I think it's an OK team, um, not team that will challenge. Um, but I think if we bring in a few um, players, which I think Arsenal will, that's the norm. Um, I think hopefully next season um, will be a big season for us. Um, and I think that will challenge and test us um, to where we're going to be, um, I think, the next few years. Um, so I think next season is a huge season for Arsenal just to stamp their authority and say, like, we are a challenging team um, mm -hmm. again. So I hope next season um, things change and that um, we are challenging again because um, as an Arsenal fan myself, that's what I know of Arsenal. Um, and I think that's where Arsenal deserve and should be is, is a title challenging team. Um, this guy says, uh, what do you think, who do you think needs more playing time to prove himself? Um, in the current Arsenal team, I think everyone, um, I think everyone in the squad needs playing time, um, because, you know, in football, when you're not playing, you lose confidence, um, you lose fitness and you lose sharpness. Um, so I think a lot of players who aren't playing, um, on the whole or, um, players that might've been in the team that have been out of the team, um, I think everybody in, in the whole at Arsenal needs to, to play regularly and get back into to the Arsenal way of playing. Um, and I think it's the whole team. I think it's not just one individual. I think it's the whole team that, that needs to get back mm. to, to playing. OK, Mr A says, uh, Justin, thoughts on Coutinho bringing from Samba Magic uh, to the Emirates. Time to bring him in and move Ozil aside, he says. Uh, of course, of course uh, Philip Coutinho has been linked with a possible loan move to Arsenal. He's been linked with uh, quite a few other clubs as well. Um, yeah. Would that be a good signing, if, if a good loan signing, if we could get that done? I think Tony is a great player. I think he'd add something um, different to Arsenal. Uh, and I think he'd be a great signing for, for Arsenal. I think he's a great player. Um, where would he fit in the Arsenal team, I think, is the question. Um, I think he would fit in for sure. Um, I, you know, people have their own opinion about Ozil. I think he's um, a confidence player, a player that's maybe low on confidence in um, mm. some of the games. But... Um, 
I think Coutinho would be a great sign if we can sign him and if that gets over, it gets done, then I think that'd be a great attribute to have at the team. Hmm. Uh, we're going to do the last couple now. We're running out of time on the show. Peter yes, says, Justin, um, how are you doing, man? I used to use you a lot in my previous FIFA games. You were untouchable, he said. Oh, uh, good back then. <laughs> thanks for bringing it on, Robbie. Much love from Atlanta. Oh, thanks. Thanks for much love from Atlanta, man. Thanks, man. Yeah, I was good at FIFA back then. I don't know what they've done to my stats now, but yeah, I was good on FIFA back then. I hope <laughs> I'll make it back on there one more time. What was your top stat on it? Well, I don't even know. I don't even know what my top stat on FIFA was. I think it was probably my speed. <laughs> <laughs> um, Afam says, what was it like winning the FA Youth Cup back in 2001 when senior players couldn't win the real FA Cup? Oh, it was great winning the FA Youth Cup, and I think for me, I was I was still um, I think I was playing with the older ones. So, and I was on the bench, and I think I played like one or two games, and I think that was great for me to to be a part of. Um, and as an academy, that's what you want to win. That's like the trophy you want to win. Um, mm. So to achieve that, that was great. Um, and you know, Arsenal unfortunately that time didn't win um, the FA Cup, but you know they won it in previous years. So we wanted to to bring a youth trophy um, back to Arsenal. Brilliant. And uh, this is the last one for the night. This is Sam Parker. He says, hi, Robbie. Justin is a cool guy. Knows his stuff. Talking a lot of sense. Fair play to him. Wish him good luck. Thank you so much. Thanks for the comments. Um, I like to talk about football. I'm very passionate about Arsenal and about football. And I think that kind of helps. Um, my, has helped my career, you know, what I've been um, through and seen and, and been around. Um, I kind of know a lot about the game. So I think that's mm. kind of helped, you know, with the players I've been around in the career I've had. So thanks for the comments. Mm, sorry, I've got one more. Sorry, one more. Uh, uh, question for both. How does Arteta strike the balance between defence and attack? Um, we improved massively in defence, but missing that cutting edge up front. Yeah, I think I think he's, I think uh, Arsenal now, I think he's starting from the defence um, and working his way forward. Um, and I think that's kind of what, Man City done um, when Guardiola come. You can see he signed defenders first and worked his way forward into the attack. And I think I think that's a similar approach. I think Arteta's having um, because at the end of the day, if you stop goals going in, um, you're not going to lose games. Mm. So I think that's what Arteta's kind of kind of starting. Um, and I think you know during this COVID time and the time that is like a non-playing time, I think he's working on ideas of. Uh, how to improve the attack and, and be more, um, say, dominant um, and have more impact in the attacking third. Um, and I think we'll see that um, when the Football League, when Premier League starts. And then I think again next season for sure, I think Arsenal will be a huge attacking team and getting back to the attacking Arsenal football that we, we like to see and love. It's, a, it's um, been brilliant. You know, I, the, the only one thing I thought to ask you, you so. You still playing as a right back, or have you? No, 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 no. I've, 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 I've had enough of running up and down. I've, I've stopped that running up and down now. I'm too old for that. <laughs> I was like, if you're still getting up and down, that no, pitch. no, no, I'm too old for that. I, I tell the team, I said, listen, I said all that running up and down is finished for me. I need to just. So now I play um, centre back. Um, okay. It's more more reading the game, um, and I feel like if I help the the players around me, um, in front of me and beside me then my job becomes easier. Mm. Uh, so I think helping at centre-back is helping the whole team. Um, so I've slotted in at centre-back for this team. Um, mm. And it's going quite well. I'm really enjoying it. Um, we're a good passing team that's playing out from the back. Um, we have a great coach um, and some good young players. So I feel I can help them um, from centre-back more so than at right-back. Mm. Uh, but no, them days of me running up and down, I, I try and do it every now and then, you know, to get that little urge and little excitement <laughs> to, to try and score. Um, but I know, I know I'm coming to the end of my career, so it's kind of like, what position can I get the maximum um, out of my career for the next, hopefully, five years, um, God willing. And your best ever right back for you? Best ever right back? Mm. Um, I say Danny Alves, just because I love the way he plays. Um, mm. And I was lucky to get to watch him when he was at Seville when we played then. Um, but no, I've watched him for many years, and I say Danny Alves. Um, just the way he gets up and down the field. Cafu. No, I, yeah, I, I was going to say Cafu. Um, and I was mm. lucky enough to, to swap jerseys with him in the Legends game. 
um, yeah. for me. So that's a great bit of, of history for me that I've got to swap jerseys with someone that I've watched for many years in the World Cups and everything. Um, but I think I watched more of Danny Alves than I did Cafu. Mm. Um, so that's why I say Danny Alves. But no, for me, Cafu changed um, the way right backs play. And then I think yeah. Danny Alves perfected that. Yeah, well, Brilliant, listen, brilliant. It's been fantastic having you on. Your knowledge of all things football has been absolutely brilliant. Thanks for giving us your time. I know you're over there in the States at the moment. Stay yeah. safe as well. And um, hopefully you can, you know, when this thing calms down, you can get to come back to the UK for a little yeah. bit. <laughs> you're going to have to go to a two-week quarantine as well. But... Yeah, no, yeah, I'm stuck inside for two weeks. But yeah, no, thanks for having me on. Thanks, it's been a pleasure. And thanks no, for the questions also. No, the pleasure's been all ours. And, um, you know, the... People have loved you being on. There's been so many questions coming for you. So thank you very much, um, uh, Justin, and all the best right, in the future. All right, thank look you. Take care. Keep safe. Look us up when you're back in the UK. Yeah, for sure I will do. Thanks so much. Take care. Thank you very much. Take care. care. Bye-bye. Justin Hoyts, ladies and gentlemen, you're absolutely brilliant tonight. And thanks for watching. We'll be back in the morning at 10 o'clock.